Whether desegregating schools, promoting affirmative action, or encouraging prison reform, federal courts have used their inherent authority to issue remedies for constitutional violations. In Hutto v. Finney, we'll explore whether a federal court could order a remedy to prevent a legal act that, when combined with other acts, violated constitutional rights. An Arkansas jail was overcrowded, contained no furniture, and had practically non-flushable toilets. Communal mattresses were only dragged out to the floor at night. Prisoners were punished with isolation and fed under 1,000 calories a day. Due to these conditions, a group of inmates, including Robert Finney, sued Terrell Don Hudo and the Department of Corrections in the Eastern District of Arkansas in 1969 alleging that the cruel and unusual conditions violated the 8th and 14th Amendments. After finding the conditions unconstitutional, the district court directed the department to make a substantial start on improving conditions and monitored its progress. When progress was unsatisfactory, a second hearing was held. Although some improvements had been made, conditions were still unconstitutional. As a result, the district court entered a series of remedial orders and used hearings to monitor the department's progress over four years. Eventually, the district court decided to withdraw its supervisory jurisdiction, but left its remedial orders in place. The Eighth Circuit reversed the district court's decision to withdraw its supervision. The district court held another hearing and found that conditions were even worse than when litigation had first begun. As a result, the district court entered an injunction limiting the number of inmates in a cell, requiring bunks in cells, requiring dietary improvements, and imposing a 30-day limit on punitive isolation. It also awarded the prisoners' attorney's fees. The Eighth Circuit affirmed this order on appeal. Almost 10 years after the case began, the department appealed to the United States Supreme Court, primarily challenging the 30-day isolation limit. 